Okay, we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about Photoshop in terms of a painting program. Um, up until now, we've been doing a lot of work with photo manipulation and things that already exist. And so now we're going to talk about how we could use those brushes and the tools that we've been exploring to actually create a painting. So um, for this very first piece, I would like you to find a um, royalty-free picture. Um, something like a sunset or a flower or a sunrise, something that's got a lot of repetition and a lot of color mixing, but doesn't necessarily have a lot of like little detail to worry about. Okay. Um, the very first thing that I'm going to have you do is create a new and blank layer. Um, so we're going to click right here, make a blank layer. Um, I've actually already started one, so we'll talk about that in just a second. But some keyboard shortcuts. So we're going to move to the brush tool. Um, whether you use a pressure brush or not is entirely up to you in a matter of preference at this point. Um, I think it is kind of nice to have a pressure size because it's going to respond really how intuitively you would expect. Um, so as I am pressing harder on my document, um, I'm going to have a bigger chunk of color and if I lighten up it'll get smaller. So you do whatever makes sense for you. Some keyboard shortcuts that we already know about. If you press the I, the letter I on your keyboard, it will move you to the eyedropper. And the eyedropper's job, remember, is to pick up colors from wherever you are on your document. So you can see that color changing as I move around. If I go back to B for brush, and now I'm painting, okay, so let's say that I've picked up this color, I for eyedropper, B for brush, okay. So now here's the color that's happening right here. Oops, sorry right here in the middle, okay? Um, if I hold the Alt key while I am painting on a brush, it will toggle back to the eyedropper, okay? And that is really awfully handy, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just have a smaller, slightly brush. And so rather than toggling between I and B, you can just keep your finger on the Alt key, just like you would if you were cloning or using the healing brush and you needed to be getting a source often, okay? Um, we're going to just hit Alt, pick up a new color as I need it, and continue on painting right there, okay? So um, we're going to have a magical cooking show moment. So rather than you watch that entire process, um, I'm just going to show you one that I've already done. Look, it's magic through the magic of time lapse. So um, even so, though, there, I have done a lot of painting up here at this top third of this painting. If I hide my background layer, you will see there are a tremendous amount of gaps right here. Okay, um, so there are places that I still have not filled. I'm going to need to address those at some point, but we will uh, talk about how we can do that in a minute. So I'm going to move to this layer, um, and now I'm going to start working on mixing these two colors together. So I'm going to introduce you to a new magical tool that you are going to like an awful lot. So under the brushes over here on the left, uh, we have the mixer brush tool, the very bottom of that, which is super fun. So the mixer brush is going to come up with um, kind of a blank slate to start with. So I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit so we can concentrate just a little bit on the relationship of the colors and go back here. So I have some settings. Um, they are probably going to start off very close to the numbers that I have right here. Um, and you're going to, I think that this is a good place to start, but we'll talk about what these things do in a minute after you see what happens. Um, here the other thing is uh, right now I have nothing showing in this um, kind of square right here. Okay, so to load the brush, um, it's going to grab from wherever I am. Now here's the thing. If I hold the Alt key, do you see how I get that target? That's the same target that we have seen um, in the clone. So if I Alt and click, it will load my brush, or at least hypothetically anyway, with... So that really is supposed to be like grabbing the colors of the brush, but I think it's going to be okay. So we'll see. So if I'm on my mixer brush now and I paint, if you can see, what's happening is it's picking up a little bit of each of those colors and it is smushing them together, for lack of a better technical term. Okay. Um, the really cool thing about Mixer Brush is that it works exactly like paint. So here's this lighter blue. If I take this lighter blue, I can actually draw and pull it into places where it didn't exist already. Some of you out there are very artsy people, 
And I know already you are getting excited because this is really bringing a whole level of um, control and style and um, opportunity that you have not seen yet in this program. And this is pretty exciting. So um, as I move back and forth, right, I can push and pull as needed and be as stylistic as I want to. Okay, so I could really have a lot of fun as I'm drawing um, and mixing and smushing my colors together. So this is generally the plan as we are working. Now I am on a pretty small brush right now. Um, you could absolutely go even bigger and affect bigger areas at once. Um, but I would like you to play a little bit. Now there are some of these like little circle-y kind of things happening right here. So we have some options. Um, first off, if I move the wetness either up or down, if I move the wetness down, um, those of you coming here from a 2D background will know if your brush is dry, look at the difference. We're not really getting nearly as much moving of the paint as if I move to a much wetter brush. Okay. Now it's like, oh, no problem. Would you like that to go over there? Sure. Okay. So that's a matter of preference. What do you want to accomplish with this tool at any given point? Um, the load is how much paint is happening on the brush. So if I go higher with this, we're going to have a much higher chunk of color happening, okay, as I'm moving around. As I load this down, okay, we're going to just have fewer, le less color on the brush, um, a slower progression between colors, okay. Um, and so I usually keep this kind of ish here in the middle. Mixing is how much between the two colors should be mixing. So if I lower this and I move to a new place, um, you'll see we're just, it's softening the edge between, but it's not necessarily um, actually mixing them together to create a new color. Whereas if I go higher with this number, um, it will behave more like paint and we will be having colors mixing together and um, creating new shades as that happens in between. Okay. Um, flow is also related to low. It's, it's like kind of how fast is it going to come off the brush? Okay, so do some experimenting. Decide what makes sense for you in this particular um, instance and do some playing. It's fun to get a new tool and a new thing to play with. Um, I would like to take a minute before we leave, though, um, to talk about two things for problem solving. So one, um, we do have some keyboard shortcuts that we've talked about. And uh, we know that B takes us to brush and I takes us to eyedropper. But you actually can control what these things do. Okay, so if we go to edit and we go to keyboard shortcuts, you can personalize your sh shortcuts to whatever tools you would want to use. So I can do this for menus and I can do it for tools. These are all of the tools that are happening over here on the left. Um, and if you notice, um, the M is currently being used by the rectangle and elliptical marquee tool. Um, so just as, uh, as I was trying to find a, a key that made sense for the mixer brush, M is right down on the bottom. It's right near my space bar. Um, it's just one over from the B, so it's easy to find. And I don't ever really do this, okay? So I don't ever really need my rectangular marquee, certainly not in a way that I need the keyboard shortcut to be happening. So for me, I've removed M from being the rectangle marquee, and I'm going to scroll down until I get to my brushes. Okay, so um, there's my regular brush. So if you notice right now, B gets me to all of the brushes. Mixer brush is all the same. If I click in here, I can change this to an M and say OK. And now I have altered my keyboard shortcut so that B takes me to regular brush, and M takes me to mixer brush. And that really lets me move between the tools easily as I am drawing. If I want to go back to B for regular brush, now I'm painting with a color. Remember, Alt is the keyboard shortcut for picking up a new color. And then I can paint down. I have my keyboard um, brackets next to the letter P that's making my brush bigger or smaller. And this really is uh, the job of my left hand because I am a right-handed drawer. Now, if you are a left-handed drawer, then your right hand is going to be in charge of the keyboard while your left hand is working on the tablet. And then that way you can be kind of efficient about your drawing technique. Um, last thing that I want to leave you with before we say goodbye is uh, we talked about how, by the way, hey, look, 
big emptiness happening here under this uh, painting. So when you are done with this, you need to make sure that you can delete your photograph and that you have a, a painting that stands on its own by itself. Um, and no matter how hard you try with this first assignment, you're going to have gaps. It's absolutely going to be a thing. So what I'm going to suggest that you do right before you finish is add a new and blank layer, tuck it under whatever painting layers, and by all means, for the record, make multiple painting layers. That's totally a thing, okay? But we can take this layer, I can go ahead and pick up kind of one of those predominant colors, and we'll just do a paint bucket fill back there. And simply by making that a solid color or even a gradient back behind here um, will let you do your painting on top. And then if you have small gaps in between, they're not going to be nearly as noticeable as if it's a big, white, empty space. Okay. So uh, this, the, the job rather of this very first assignment is to practice and play with your mixer brush, um, to consider changing your keyboard shortcuts if you're so inclined, um, and get familiar and feel comfortable with the mixing and brushing, and then um, also tabbing back into your eyedropper as needed. Have fun.